Let me return the top three employees based on salary. I'm going to make use of a top and filter, and I'm going to have the top three and base it on the total salary field. Apply the filter and I get more than three employees. What's going on? Well, returning the top N is not always that obvious. And in this video, we're going to dive a little bit deeper. Welcome to How to Power BI. My name is Bas, and if this is the very first time for you visiting this channel, then make sure to hit that subscribe button if you want to stay up to date on all of my videos in which I share everything I know about Power BI. Now, let's have a look why this filter from before didn't work. Now, I have here a table with all of the employees, and I applied a top three filter based on total salary. Now, here I have 15 employees. Now, what is going on is that I have more than three employees with the same salary. And what happens is that it shows me all 15 employees that have the same salary. So if I switch here to, let's say, the top 10, apply the filter, doesn't change. But if I change 10 to 16, then you see I have now suddenly 23 employees because now I have also their employees with the second highest salary of 9,600. So you see, it applies a top end filter. However, because we have employees with the same salaries, it becomes a bit confusing. What probably would be more helpful is if we could say, give me all of the employees with the top two salaries or the top three salaries. Now to set this up, we have to write a DAX measure. And let's call this measure employee rank based on salary. Now here we're going to use a rank X function. And what the rank X function does, it iterates over table, row by row. Now in this case, that's going to be our employees table. And then for each employee, we are going to calculate the total salary. And then we rank that versus all of the other employees. So here the table is going to be our employee table. So let me type in employee table. And then the expression that we want to rank the employees by, that's going to be our total salary measure. Okay, now let's close the rank X function and let's see if this works. Now you see that a measure doesn't work. It returns a one for every single employee. And this is often the first problem that people run into when they start using the rank X function. Now the problem here is that the rank X function is going to iterate all of the rows within the filter context. Now the filter context in this visual is determined by the employee name. So for each employee, we have only one row. So it iterates over one row calculates the total salary and then ranks it. But because there's only one employee, it returns one everywhere. Okay, so we have to fix this. Let's go back to a measure. Now to fix a problem, we need to remove any filter that we have on the employee table. This we can do with either an all function or with an all selected function. Now the difference here is that with the all selected function, you still keep the filters from outside of the table visual. Okay, now in this case, I do want that. So I go for all selected and let's close the bracket there as well. Okay, so now it looks much better because for the first 15 employees, we have a one. And then for the next highest salary employees, we have 16. So it jumps from one to 16 because we have 50 employees with the highest salary. Okay, now if we want to jump from one to two, we can make use of one of the arguments that we have in the rank X function, which is the ties argument and how you deal with them. So if we go back to our function and then put a comma after total salary, you see we have value, order, and ties. Value we can ignore. And here the order we want to have descending. And then for the ties, that is important here. Here we want to switch from skip, which is the default, to dance. You see, now we go from one to two. What is also important for a rank X function to work is that the expression that you use for the ranking, now in our case here, that is total salary, that this is stored as a measure. Alternatively, you can also do your calculation inside of the rank X. Let's say you have the sum of the salary column, something like this. However, if you do it like this, then you need to force context transition with a calculate function. So you need to wrap it inside of a calculate function for this to work. Now I prefer to have it as a measure. So I'm going to switch back to my total salary measure. Another thing to pay attention to is that the rank X function iterates many rows because for each row in your visual, it basically has to iterate over all of the employees, return the salary, 
and then rank that versus the salaries of all the other employees. And it does that for each row in your visual. Now, the smaller that that employee table is, the quicker uh, that your function will run. Okay, so if we could say instead of employee table here, employee table and then the column name and surname, that's uh, so the employee name, then this would already run much quicker. All right, so now that we have the rank, we can build another measure that we can use for a filter. All right, so let's add a new measure. Now let's call this measure employees top end filter. And here we can use a simple if statement where we say if the rank that we just calculated, if this one is below or equal to, let's say we want to have the top two, then we want to return a one and otherwise we return a zero, okay? Now let's use this measure as a filter for our visual, all right? So have the visual selected, then drag employees top and filter onto the filter section. And here we want to say that it should be equal to one because then it is in our top two in this case. All right, so that works. And what if you just want to have the employees with the highest salary, then we can just go back to the measure and change the two into a one. Now, of course, going back to your measure to change the top end number is not ideal. So therefore, we're going to create a slicer where the end user can say what the top end number should be. All right, now to create that slicer, we can make use of what if parameters, so modeling and then new parameter. Now the name of the parameter we can change to top n, and we want to have, let's say, a value in the range of one to 10, an increment of one, default, let's say one, add the slicer to the page. Now this is all good, let's click okay. Now what happens is the following, you end up with a new disconnected table, so no relationship to any other table in your data model. And inside of the table, you have basically one column, top n, which uses the generate series function, which basically just returns one column with all the values from one to 10. Now you also see there is a measure which returns the value that's selected in the slicer, because now there's also a slicer that was added to your report. Now over here, we can just slide it to the right, and this is going to change the top and number, which we still need to put into our measure, okay? Now let's take the slicer, put it above a table, and here I'll go to format, and then under general, I turn responsiveness off, so we can make it a little bit smaller. So now we can link our slicer to the top and filter measure. So let's go back to and please top and filter. Instead of hard coding the one, we can replace that with the value that is selected in the slicer, which is returned by the measure top end value. Okay, now that was that measure that was automatically generated. So if we set the slicer to one, you see we only have the highest salary employees. If we set it to two, our table nicely updates and we see also the second highest salary employees. So now we've built a solution that for this data set here probably makes a little bit more sense and is more intuitive than the top end filter that we started off with at the beginning of this video. However, we are not entirely there just yet because what happens when we add a category field to it? For example, here, that could be the department. Let's see what happens. So I'm going to add from my employee table, department field. Now let's take our table first and transform it into a matrix. And then I'm going to add the department field above name and surname. And you see now we first have the division by department. Let's expand down. And you see it returns here all of the employees with a top end salary for that department. So here we have the top end is two. And for strategy, the, uh, the highest two salaries are 12,000 and 9,600. But for sales and partnerships, here we have a higher salary of 9,600 and second highest of 9,540. Okay, so it gives you the top N for that specific department. Now, this might be what you're looking for. However, top N could also mean not the top N by department. However, the top N considering the entire company. And if you want that, then we need to go back to a measure and make a small change. So let's go back. And here I have the employee rank based on salary measure. And you see that I return over here all of the employee names, okay? So it removes basically all of the filters that you have on the employee name. Now, it doesn't remove any filter on the department. If I want that, well, then I need to add the department here as well. So I can add the 
employee table department. And now you see it returns only those employees that earn the very highest salary considering the entire company and the second highest. So for example, for sales and partnerships, there we only have people that earn the second highest and therefore we only have two is there. Now you see that our rank measure also returns a rank of one when we're not at the level of the employee, but at the level of the department, okay? And if you don't want that, you can just go back to your measure and let's use a variable. So let's place this in a variable, let's say var, and then here employee rank, which is going to be equal to what we just wrote. And then we can extend this further and we can say over here that we want to have another variable where we are going to have the result. And we can then first check if we are at the level of, uh, of the employee and there's a function that's called is in scope. Okay, so it just checks if you're at the employee level in this case. And if we are at the employee level, then we want to return the employee rank and otherwise nothing. All right, and then we also need a return statement and return the result. Now, another thing that we could check for, maybe extend it a little bit further, we also want to make sure that there is a total salary. Okay, so that one needs to be different from zero, or you could also say not is blank. All right, so let's go back to our table and you see now it doesn't return any value when we are at the department level, only when we are at the level of the employee. So, so far you have seen that top end can be interpreted in many different ways. Now there's one more very useful case, which is top end percentage. So let's set it up. Now, just like before, we need to add a new measure. So let's do that. Now let's rename this measure to employees top end percentage filter. Now let's start off by creating a variable for the top end percentage. So let's say we start off with 10%, 0.1. Now this we can also make flexible later on with a what if parameter. Then in the second variable, we can calculate the salary percentile. And that's that salary for which we have only 10% of the employees have a salary above it and 90% has a salary below it. Okay, so it's basically at the cutoff point. Now here to calculate that, we have a percentile function. Now here we can say percentile, and in this case I would go for ink, okay. And here we can say, what is the column that we want to base it on? Well, this is going to be our salary column, monthly salary. And then what is the percentile? Well, we want to have the 90th percentile. So one minus the top end percentage. Okay, so the top end percentage. All right, now let's close the brackets and let's see if this works. So if I return now, first of all, the salary percentile, let's see what it does. Now you see it returns the same value as the total salary, not very helpful. Now, why is it not working? Because again, we have filled contacts on the department and employee name, which we need to remove. Okay, so if we go back to a measure, then we can wrap this inside of a calculate function. Now the calculate function lets us modify the filter context and we want to remove the filter on the employee name. Okay, so I remove the filter on the employee name and now let's see if it works. Now you see it returns the same value everywhere for each employee in the sales and partnerships department. However, we have different values for the next department, okay? So we are calculating basically the 90th percentile for each department, okay? Now, if you want to have the overall 90th percentile, then we also need to remove the filter on department. Okay, so over here. And you see, now we have the same value everywhere. Okay, now to turn that into a filter, we just have to go back to our measure and then add a variable for the result. Now here we can add a new variable for the result. And here we can use an if statement. And we want to check if the total salary for the employee is above or equal to that salary percentile number. And if it is, then a one, and otherwise a zero. Kind of the same logic as what we had before. And then of course, we also need to return the result. All right, so let's, let's go back to our visual, select it, and you see it returns a one 
for the very highest salary. But if we go down, then at some point, those ones turn into a zero. Okay, so if I want to filter those employees out, I can use the employees top end percentage filter on the filter section and then say it should be equal to one, apply the filter. And now all of the employees that are below it, they are filtered out. Okay, now the last thing to finish this is then to add also a new what if parameter. Now here we can call the parameter top and percentage. We want to have a value between zero and one and increments of 0 0.05 and default of 0 0.1. Okay, now also make sure that this one is selected, add slicer to the page. Now you see it doesn't like the 0 0.5, that's because the data type is still set to whole number. Let's change it to decimal number and click OK. And again, we have a slicer where we can set the percentage. However, it's not linked to the measure yet. So let's go to our employee stop and percentage filter measure. And instead of hard coding the 0.1, we can now refer to the value that returns at the selected value in the slicer. Now, this is going to be the top and percentage value. So now we have a nice slider where we can choose the percentage and everything here in the table will get filtered. And so if I put this to 0%, we only see the very highest salary employees. Okay. All right, so uh, to show this as percentages, you can also go to that disconnected table for top end percentage, take that column and then format it as percentages. In this video, you have seen that top end can mean many different things. And we have tackled some of the most common scenarios. Now, if you have any questions, just post them in the comment section below. If you thought it was helpful, then consider subscribing. Thank you. And I hope to see you in the next video.